Last week, a patient called me to tell me that um, he had developed some fatigue and started talking to, to some folks about um, thyroid disease. He said he'd gotten involved with a doc that um, told him he had, that she thought he had uh, Hashimoto's. Uh, he had some autoimmune uh, inflammatory processes going on. And he said one of the major focuses is uh, the diet and gluten in the diet. Um, there are actually a couple of books out about this, Diet and uh, Hashimoto's Disease. One's by Dr. Isabella Wentz, a pharmacist. Another is by Dr. Susie Cohen, also a pharmacist. Lots of similarities there. And both looking at um, inflammation, Hashimoto's uh, thyroiditis, both of them uh, focusing somewhat on gluten as well as, as one of the major sources of uh, inflammation. Now, <clears throat> gluten has been around for a while. A lot of people have uh, been very skeptical of the uh, science behind gluten. And what on earth could it have to do with thyroid disease? Um, <clears throat> gluten originally came out uh, as a focus on um, celiac disease, uh, leaky gut. Again, a lot of skepticism around the science around uh, leaky gut as well. So uh, I, this is just going to be a brief video on some of the science on some of these connections. It's actually a very big topic. Um, there are several uh, different uh, arms and legs to this topic, but I'm going to focus on um, <clears throat> the link to uh, thyroid, diet, uh, and leaky gut, and gluten. So one of the first things that you look at when you start to figure out how goes the science behind something is you look at the, um, where the science is coming from. Then you look at uh, how much is actually known, how much bench science is done, how much correlation do you have between epidemiology, people talking about their symptoms in, in populations, um, and again, bench science like uh, genetics, uh, protein analysis, things like that. Well, one of the first things you see is that uh, one of the key docs that came up with this gluten issue, gluten freedom, he's written a book on it, uh, is Alessio Fasano. Now, <clears throat> As you might notice here, he's from Mass General. And again, pardon my visuals, they're not the greatest. I've done a lot of work on visuals, um, and visuals are just not my strong suit. Anyway, so we're gonna get a little bit deeper into this topic and talk about uh, there is science behind all of this. Again, linking all the way up to your thyroid and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and diet, and gluten. Um, but first, uh, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. Uh, <clears throat> PrevMed, uh, preventive medicine. Uh, got focused on, uh, it started as an ER doc, got very frustrated with the terrible damage that uh, you see in an ER, uh, heart attacks, strokes, disability. Uh, things that really should have been prevented. So went to Hopkins and got some training in uh, preventive medicine. Ended up running the program there. Speaking of Hopkins, as I mentioned before, you've got some good science, um, at least in terms of respected institutions. Mass General is uh, where uh, Dr. Fasano is the chair of a large program. Uh, Harvard's not Hopkins, but it's pretty good. Pardon me, I had to get that comment in there. So this is Dr. Uh, Fasano right here. And this is uh, some of the, <clears throat> this starts to get into some of the bench science. Um, what, what he found is that um, gluten, gliadin's uh, related type of proteins uh, have an impact on a thing called haptoglobin and haptoglobin 2, and a protein called zonulin. Zonulin is the precursor pro protein for uh, haptoglobin 2. Uh, I, I first learned about haptoglobin 2 from my friends, uh, friends Brad uh, Bale and Amy Donin when they were talking about the significant increase uh, in cardiovascular risk 
to um, associated with heptaglobin 2, which is a very, very pro uh, prevalent um, genetic variation. Anyhow, <clears throat> these are tight junctions. These are, this is actually the, uh, a representation of the membrane of the intestine. And the intestinal wall has things called tight junctions between, tight, T-I-G-H-T, tight junctions between the cells, which keep irritants, uh, like proteins, things that you've eaten, from going, skipping over the, uh, a major port, part of the digestive process and going straight into the tissue. That, by definition, is called leaky gut. So yes, there's strong science behind leaky gut, for those of you that are still um, skeptical of it. Um, <clears throat> there are some, actually Dr. Fasano's uh, focus and research is more around celiac disease, C-E-L-I-A-C, -E which is, again, the mechanism that we're discussing here. Now, how does this happen? So, <clears throat> again, that protein called zonulin, this is the, uh, this is the, um, the nucleus of the cell. The endoplasmic reticulum, and you remember the RNA is translated uh, or transcribed. The DNA is transcribed to RNA. The RNA is translated to a protein called zonulin. This protein is called zonulin. In the, um, again, the endo endoplasmic reticulum. Zonulin then has an impact on a couple of key cell membrane receptors, PAR3, uh, EGF, a couple of others. Um, these receptors, when they are impacted by zonulin, actually have an impact on the tight junctions. And they loosen the tight junctions, and that's what allows the ingress of foreign objects into the membranes. Now, <clears throat> again, I described this originally, and Dr. Fasano's major research at Harvard has been originally around the gut lining. Guess what? <clears throat> This process uh, with tight junctions actually happens in other organs of the body too, like the thyroid. So, guess what? Yes, you, st you can start getting Im significant impact on the thyroid gland associated with um, inflammation from your diet and from gluten. So. There's actually far better science than you might have imagined um, based on this process. <clears throat> Here's, by the way, some, uh, electro or some uh, photomicrographs of um, healthy and inflamed uh, intestinal mu mucosa. Um, actually, <clears throat> I won't, won't go further on that because it, I've got some other information I want to cover. Remember we talked about the level of research in terms of genetics. It's been discovered that this, uh, they've actually found that um, zonulin is on, you recognize this? This is a chromosome. And actually it's chromosome 16. Chromosome 16 has been linked with a lot of autoimmune disorders as well as some other inflammation related disorders. Again, zonulin's on, made on this uh, this area, this chromosome. Here is a schematic of the chromosome after you unwind it and different areas of the chromosome that have been associated with different problems. Now, <clears throat> remember we also said this can happen in multiple organs. This problem of inflammation associated with tight junctions. Well, think about <clears throat> if you start looking at uh, this, our 16th chromosome, Actually, there is a huge list of diseases associated with problems in this area. Autoimmune diseases, cancers, uh, uh, nervous system, <clears throat> schizophrenia, dementia, um, uh, 
celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, rheum rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, diabetes, in fact, uh, type 1 diabetes. So, in fact, we may find that a significant link in this autoimmune process with type 1 diabetes. More uh, bench science. Um, <clears throat> this is the sequence, the amino acid sequence of that uh, zonulin protein. I'm not going to get too detailed on that. I don't know that it's worth my uh, worth our time right now. This is a couple of pieces of information I got from um, my friends Brad Bale and Amy Dunneen, who wrote uh, "Beat the Heart Attack Gene." They're looking at uh, increased risk for heart attack and stroke for people with haptoglobin 2-2, zonulin. If you combine HAP2-2 with diabetes, a, um, a hemoglobin A1C of 6.5 or greater, you get a huge increase in the risk of heart attack and stroke. And in fact, um, this research that uh, their quoting is coming from uh, Millman and Associates, 2008, uh, Atherosclerosis and throm uh, Thrombotic Vascular Biology. This is a what we call a life table analysis. So these people, these are having life events like death. And then what you found is... Um, you, you get a huge increase in death associated with having haptoglobin 2-2 or zonulin. Why is that? Again, we t we've been talking about this inflammatory process. And yes, that inflammatory process can hit multiple uh, organs, <clears throat> including our cardiovascular system. So again, this has been a, uh, a long video, but uh, I, I thought it would be helpful to connect a lot of dots on cardiovascular inflammation, um, autoimmune diseases, uh, GI inf uh, inflammatory diseases, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, a lot of diseases that uh, we're just beginning to see are associated with uh, uh, inflammation. Thank you for your interest.